Peace and greetings. Welcome to another True School podcast. My name is Shalina Ali, and today we have special guest, Dia Mark. Hi, Dia. Hi. Dia is a True School alumni, Mm -hmm. and you were a participant for many years. Yes. You actually, when I met you, you weren't even old enough to be part of True School yet, and then you had joined pretty much right away at 14. Do I got yeah. that correct? Mm-hmm. It's just pretty amazing because now we have Dia back in our space as a teaching artist and you are actually our first official organized True School alumni artist in residence. Yes. yes. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. And I've had a really good time being an artist in residence so far been nice to come in work on my stuff work on true school stuff and just chill in the space and collaborate with people that's really great yeah we love having you here for sure what's a memory a true school memory from being a young teenage participant that you have who do you remember what do you remember like what was the vibe back then my knee-jerk reaction to that question (laughs) is uh i was here as a visual arts and a video production student and so I never really stepped foot in the MC or like the music production rooms, right? Uh, yeah. um, and then during the True Knowledge, it used to be on Wednesdays, the True Knowledge uh, courses, you guys made me uh, like rap. You guys made me rap battle. And I actually made it like two or three rounds. I didn't get kicked off right away. So I was like, okay, I can hold my own a little bit. And then I couldn't think of a rhyme. So I got eliminated. <laughs> but I like that you guys like very forcibly got me out of my comfort zone. But it ended up being really fun. And everybody was like cheering me on. And we were all laughing together. So... That was a good memory. I love that memory. Yeah. And you're correct. We were True Knowledge Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And we're now True Knowledge Mondays. Nice. And it's it's interesting, the uniqueness of each alumni's time, like when they come in this space. Like we were cleaning out the art room the other day Mm -hmm. and we were pulling out your art. You had a lot of art. I did. And you shared with me the other day that you haven't been creating art for a long time. Not, not, no, you're definitely an artist. You're creating, yeah, yeah. but I mean like visual art, yeah. paint to canvas. Mm-hmm. I actually had a really big phase over um, COVID, like over lockdown, where I got into doing like alien landscapes and watercolor. That was a good phase, but that was like very different from like when I was a teenager. I would just do portraiture, mm-hmm. mostly like portraiture of women. That was kind of my, mm-hmm. you know, my niche. <laughs> do you remember who your instructors were when you were? At true school? Yeah, I think I just had James. But I really like James. I had this memory that I feel like other art programming, they kind of made us do a lot of like still lifes and like stuff we weren't very like engaged in. Mm. And I remember I was kind of locked in probably like drawing like a portrait of a woman. And and this kid came in, it was his first day, and he just like was not really talking at all. And uh, James was like, hey man, what do you want to draw? And he was like, I want to draw a snail. A snail. (laughs) And so James just sat there for like two hours and helped this kid draw a snail. And I was like, that is amazing. And it was a good snail. (laughs) You got good stories. It's it's always amazing. I I love the open-ended questions just from the perspective of the participant, especially after the fact in in the way they, or I'll say what their memories hold on to, mm-hmm. like from being here in, in their um, time as a young, as a young and as a young artist and, yeah. and also needing that emotional development at right. that same time of that creative development. Mm-hmm. And who was your instructor for your media class? Um, it was Gideon. Gideon. Yeah. 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 He was a good teacher, too. And this is the class you're now teaching. Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. I think that's most impressive is I'm kind of intimidated by teaching the kids editing because that's a little more like intensive. You kind of just have to like sit there and learn it. Mm. But like once you got it, you got it. And you have it's like riding a bike. You like got that your whole life. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's a needed skill to have Mm -hmm. if you don't. And that's one of the things I mean, one of the things we want to do is not look at young people as kids who are coming to play. Yeah. Like they're coming determined to learn something. Yeah. And if they get the proper guidance mm-hmm. that will help them determine later on if they want to make this a career or if it's just something that they reminisce on, that's up to them. But our responsibility at True School is to provide that high level technical information mm-hmm. to make it fun, to make it relevant to what they're interested in yeah. and then trust the process from there because then you have a whole young human who has to figure out the rest and, yeah. and determine what that means to them. Mm-hmm. 
And for you, it has turned into a career. So let's talk about you as a filmmaker. Oh my gosh, where, <laughs> where do I start? Where do we start? <laughs> What's the first finished product that you like? were just like, I did that? Um, I would say my first finished project that I was like really proud of was my senior project at UWM. Um, that was like a horror movie that was like very feminist and had like a queer protagonist. And it was like very like cool lighting. And I was just like very proud of it that I had like made this thing that I was like, yeah, I was very proud of it. How difficult was it? It was hard. I had, well, my um, my actress, I um, met her on this photo shoot for like a vintage um, clothing store that we did. A, she was the model and I was taking photos and um, she was in this like sheer dress and it was like 30 degrees outside and windy. <laughs> and um, she was in this sheer dress for like an hour and I was just snapping pictures and she was like just doing like mo her model f like poses really well. And I could tell that she was cold as hell, but she did not like I don't know she didn't complain at all and then when she applied um to be in my film I was like oh she can handle her stuff you know oh that's great yeah in your film did you write a script for that yeah I wrote a script really fast actually in like a month because um I wanted to have it ready to go for it. I wanted to shoot because um your senior project you have a year to do it like two semesters so what you're saying is you spent less time writing the script and a whole lot more time creating the film yeah did it just happen that way or did you already understand that the heavy lifting was going to be on the the filming and editing aspects? Yeah, I knew that I wanted to have, I didn't want it to be a rush to shoot, especially. I wanted it to be like, I, I knew I wanted like dynamic lighting and I wanted like good performances and like art direction, like the backgrounds, how everything looks. And um, I wanted it to be very like visually striking and I knew that we yeah, couldn't rush that. How many different actors did you have for that film? I only had like three main actors and then I had about like five people be like dead bodies, which like <laughs> shout out to them. <laughs> I actually had a funny story. My friend was like laying on the ground with like fake guts on him and we had him out in, yeah, it was winter and he was just like laying on gravel. And so at some point somebody gave him a neck pillow that they found in my car and we got some great shots of like, like people crawling away doing amazing acting and then somebody was like, yeah, he's had the neck pillow for like three shots. <laughs> so we had to go take that off the dead body. So what is the the difference between finding your main actors mm -hmm. and finding like the extras or, you know, the the, the people who are just kind of complimenting or creating the scene on the side? Um, I definitely put more thought into casting the main people, obviously. I really look for people that can um, take direction really well. So if they're doing one thing, um, that's their instinct. I can be like, actually, can you try this other thing? And that's like more important than having someone who like does it really well the first time, I okay. guess, as someone who can like change and adapt um, as they go along. So that's one thing I look for. And then for extras, I often like end up casting like friends and acquaintances because I like filling out the world with like people I know because like, you know, that's my world. Yeah. <laughs> Adds a little fun, yeah. predictability. Yeah. And then you my know. friends love to be like, my friend Mia, who was one of the dead bodies, was like, oh yeah, I put this on at Christmas. And my mom or my mom and grandma thought it was hilarious that I was like, they were like, you did such a good job being a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> and that's very like heartwarming to me. <laughs> Do you tend to find that when you ask people that they are receptive to supporting you? Yeah, yeah, they are. And I think people also love to like be on screen, especially for something fun, like a horror movie that I'm like, yeah, I'm going to splash you in blood and you're going to be like, really <laughs> uncomfortable for 30 minutes and then you're going to be in a movie forever. You know, do you have any friends or people that have done multiple projects with you? Yeah, my best friend Kat, actually, um, we joke that she's typecast because one of my old roommates was also a film major and we would always cast her as like a dancing woman at a party. So she's in like five different projects just as a woman, like, you know, dancing her head off. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good typecast. Yeah. OK. And so we have the first project. How many projects have you done since? Because you're still you're still young in your career. Yeah. And and I know that you just finished something pretty amazing. And, and I want to lead up to that, mm -hmm. um, because even though you have this project that I mean, it's still coming out. The the world has not seen it yet. Yeah. It, uh, it doesn't. It does not take the shine away from all that you have accomplished. Mm -hmm. So was there more projects after the horror film? After the horror film, I took a rest for a little bit, I think. Was that the summer? Yeah, I think that was the summer I went to Europe and <laughs> with my friend. I had some, because I feel like you have to like experience things in order to like start writing the next thing. And then I started writing Rear View Mirror, which is my new project right after that. Um, and that took form uh, that next September after I graduated, I believe. So that is this project. Yeah. Okay. But 
I did I I did say my senior project was the first thing I was proud of, but I did make like plenty of projects before that. I just yeah. wasn't super like excited about them in the same way. And there were a lot of me um, being in front of the camera and behind the camera and then running and like turning the camera on <laughs> and running and adjusting the lights. And it was like very stressful. It's actually like less stressful to have a bunch of people helping you. Lesson learned. Yeah. Lesson learned. <laughs> I do remember you doing a screening here at True School yep. and it was a very personal video. Do you remember which one that was? Oh, it was called Daisy Girl maybe? It was me. Daisy that was Girl. Yes. That's that was one what of the it was. first projects I made in film school actually and we watched a lot of like personal like essayistic like diary films and I was like I'm gonna talk about me being biracial and growing up in Illinois and like kind of the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I had an easier time than most. I actually had a friend, like one of my besties when I was a child was half Ethiopian and we were really like bonded over that. Yeah. But yeah, that was, I look back on that pretty fondly, even though I like probably wouldn't be as proud of it today, but yeah. uh, that was kind of a good, like, I don't know. It was very diaristic and I think it turned out nice. I was really proud of you for creating something so personal. Yeah. And, and like to, that was my first introduction to your like post true school creative um contributions to yeah. the world mm -hmm. and i was just like wow that it well i mean i have half daisy in common yeah. and so it it gave me such a like a flashback to my own relationship with my father and mm -hmm. how that has shown up culturally in my life and then so I, like you know your mom was here your mom mm -hmm. your mom always shows up to support you and you know like myself being like that added true school mom and, and being able to be proud of you in that way. Mm -hmm. And then also when you create something so personal, so honest, it's it's easy to know that other people are going to have an opportunity to see themselves in that too. Maybe not every person, but there's going to be a lot of people that are going to say, I can relate to that. Yeah. And then the next film was the horror film. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, I feel like that film was also like more like, what's it called? It's like also very personal, but in a very like abstract and crazy way. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was like fun. It was just fun. And, and I love to see just how different it is because mm -hmm. that just shows the capacity of you as an artist. You're yeah. not just looking to stay in a particular lane. Um, and, you know, then to jump into Rearview Mirror. Mm -hmm. that's, is that the official way you say the title? Yeah. Okay. To Rearview Mirror. And I was one of those people you called on. How'd that end up happening? So to those who don't know, uh, Shalina plays um, Rico's mom, which is one of the main characters' mothers in uh, my film, Rebu Mir. And me and Austin were trying to brainstorm. We were like, we need like a young, hot, cool mom who's like, <laughs> yes, who's like kind of cool with her son being, a, um, you know, outside of the law a little mm -hmm. bit but is like very protective of her kids. And we were also like, oh, who won't be offended at like being asked to be a mom in a film? And we were mm. like, oh, what if we got Shalina? Because um, <laughs> me and Austin, this uh, one of the leads, uh, met at True School. So we'd known Shalina for years. Um, but that was a very natural conclusion we came to. So I like, texted you as soon as we thought of it. <laughs> that was so awesome. It was the hottest day ever. Yeah. And it was like Mexican mom, cook, <laughs> Spanish speaking. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. Yeah, you did Not great. a lot. I actually polled a bunch of people after we shot that. I was like, can you tell her she doesn't speak Spanish super wow. well? And everybody was like, no, she did a great job. So That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> but so, like, just pulling up to a house and then having, like, it was, it was a real set. The way you yeah. guys did it, and there was a script. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, now this is even, <laughs> this is different yet from yeah. what I've seen from your work. Mm -hmm. So that was really exciting to see you do, like, a film yeah how that um i don't know how was that process for you as far as writing the script how did that differ from the first one that you talked about like rushing through i think that this one kind of like flowed out of me more naturally is that i had been like stewing on this idea for a while um, and i'd been wanting to do like a road trip with a lot of like you know like slow i love like a slow burn romance that's like one of my favorite tropes and so i wanted to include that and then I also wanted to have some like personal, uh, like me leaving a bad relationship and like what that looks like and like meeting the next person after that. And like, um, so a lot of that I projected onto this film. But yeah, I feel like this was a more natural progression. Whereas my last film, the horror film, I knew that like I wanted this like traumatic stuff to happen to her, the horror element. And then I wanted her to run away, but I didn't know how to bring her back. And so I kind of mm -hmm. had to like stew on that and figure that out for a while. I had a good writer's block. Um, 
And then this one, yeah, it just came more naturally. And then I wanted like the twist of, I won't tell you the twist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can't. We're no spoilers. <laughs> Did your lead actors influence what ended up on the screen at all? Yeah, for sure. So I think I projected myself a lot more onto Mina, the main character. And I think that the character of Rico, who is like the romantic lead, wasn't as um, fleshed out. And uh, we, when we went to the Dells for one of our shoot days, where we have really good locations, we have this like crazy whale coming out of a pool. We have this like gas station with a dinosaur in it. So we we drove to the Dells in this old car from '95, and we it was gonna die on us at any moment. I was moment. gonna say, did you guys feel safe? <laughs> no. So I had Austin drive. So it was me and Austin and the camera in this car, and. Um, the owner of the car said, do not go above 45 or 50. And so it took us a really long time to get to the Dells. And so we were just talk, talking shop. We were talking about the character. And I was also asking him, like, I wrote this character as Latino, but I'm not Latino. Um, and so he kind of had some, like, cultural insight to that. Like, mm. the part, there's a part of the movie that um, the main character, Mina, orders chicken tacos. And he's like, that's some baby food. Like, who orders chicken tacos? <laughs> and so it was stuff like that. Um, and so I... I am very appreciative that he like brought that to the character, some like cultural insight, and he also helped me flesh out the character and think of the character Rico as more human and not just somebody who had like wronged Mina in a way. Totally. And how did Mina end up becoming a main actress? Uh, Isabel, my actress, um, I met at like my housewarming party. She was a filmmaker friend's best friend who had also appeared in some of her um, other films, and she had a couple of funny stories that she's like, yeah, my friend Hannah had me um, smoke a whole pack of cigarettes in a called a cemetery like all night and i was oh like oh gosh. okay so you've been through the the oh, ringer so, so this was not her first acting no not her first acting okay thing. yeah she was professional as possible yeah, so i'm not surprised job, but yeah. also but she kept being like oh i'm not a real actress i've just been in a ton of like student films and i was like you're a real actress don't <laughs> don't undersell yourself but yeah i feel like she brought good like cool girl energy to it i feel like i'm like a big softy and i feel like she brought like her own thing to the role so it wasn't just like uh, self-insert of the author. So I thought that was very valuable too. And and I know you had mentioned that you were intentional about having an interaction between two female characters. Yeah. What, there was like a criteria. I actually, I was just talking about this, that Austin actually brought up to me that my film does not pass the Bechdel test, <laughs> which <laughs> means that two women talk about something other than a man. And so I was like, oh no, I did not pass the Bechdel test. But it is about my experience, you know, growing up. Yeah. Not a man. Um, so, okay, that made me laugh. I was like, you as a man are telling me it didn't pass the back to the And Agu. <laughs> Go Agu. But I did have a um, conversation between the two uh, female characters, the two lead roles. Um, but there's a moment that they talk outside the party, these two women who end up kind of being in uh, opposition to each other. And I wanted that like kind of humanizing moment because I feel like when you have conflict with another woman, especially like over a guy or something, you tend to like dehumanize them and be like, mm. oh, she sucks anyway, or she's right. not as pretty as me or whatever. But I just like wanted this conversation between these two women to be like, oh, they're both like chill girls who in other circumstances might have gotten along. And like, yeah. you know, they do get along and they're both like smart, real women. Which is usually the case. Yeah, it is usually the case. Usually. I just wanted that, like, little moment of them getting along and being, like, you know, having some solidarity for one second. <laughs> were there any other themes that you felt like were really important to be represented in, in that film? I think I just wanted to show a good portrait of, like, growing up in Milwaukee mm. um, with, like, the um, the locations and the, the way that Rico talks and, like, the family moments, that kind of thing. Um, what else? And I wanted to show, I feel like a big theme is like, I've talked about this before, but the coming of age story of the young adult and like mm -hmm. finding out who you are after a bad breakup, especially that's like kind of its own coming of age. Cause you're like, who am I when I'm on my own? You know, we were having a conversation about the fact that it is a relationship story. Mm -hmm. So, and like, how was it having, well, the chemistry between everyone on set and yeah. then between the main characters in that process. We shot the film kind of chronologically, um, so like kind of in order, um, which often in movies they don't do. Um, but it is like a road trip movie. And so like the first day was like the first day when uh, uh, Rico picks up Mina from the side of the road. And it was just funny because like as we went on through shooting, like me and the actors and the other people, I had a sound guy and a 
PA sometimes and then my assistant director and we were all kind of getting to know each other and I feel like you could see the chemistry and like the like friendliness just like build between all of us as it went on and I feel like yeah. even like the camera like I got more comfortable like getting in their space and being like move your freaking arm so I can get the camera here <laughs> you know and like that kind of attitude um, and so I feel like you can kind of visually tell that we were like getting more comfortable with each other but I thought it was kind of funny that um the lead to like didn't have any chemistry in real life um so we we laughed about that because it was like as soon as we cut they're like all right get away from me i mean they were like perfectly really friendly real life acting yeah, here it was really good <laughs> acting exactly so what is and, and it kind of sounds like there was a lot of learning lessons for you mm -hmm. the next time you go into a project you're going to be more comfortable you're going to have a different understanding yeah and you're going to be able to jump in differently which then opens up the doors to learn new things and yeah. figure out what else you need to grow into or get good at. What are you thinking about? What's next? Um, I think for my next project, I am like, I just finished writing a script. I'm going to work on that sometime in the future. But I think my next project, I want to dive back into the really like stylized lighting and like put a lot of like intentionality into um, the backdrops and the costumes and all that sort of thing. Because Rear View Mirror, like, I love this project so much, but it was a lot of like run and gun. We were like outside, we were in a car. It was like 97 degrees and there was a Yo, lot. Yo, it was the hottest day ever, <laughs> the day we filmed. Yeah. Like I, I didn't even want to put makeup on. I was like, oh no, how this is going to stay here. <laughs> but yeah, it was, the struggle was real. One of the days that we shot the, um, the pool scene, we were uh, in this motel. And uh, as soon as we cut, I was like, I'm getting in the pool. Like, <laughs> like, like lock away the camera and I'm getting in the pool. And like, that was a fun, like bonding moment too, is that we were all just like swimming together in the Dells. That's cool. Yeah. So where can people expect or look forward to finding um, their viewing of Rearview Mirror? Um, well, you can follow me on Instagram at uh, Dia Gitanjali which is D-I-Y-A-G-I-T-A-N-J-A-L-I. And um, I will be posting updates there. I don't have any confirmed screenings yet, but I'm hoping to put some up in the next couple of months. And I think that is an important piece. Also, you can go to True School 414 on all social media platforms, and you will definitely find um, links to follow up with Dia as well. As our current artists in residence, it is our job to big up Dia's work and um, keep following, you know, the growth and the successes. What, you know, you have this product now and, you know, I know I jumped to asking you about the next project, but really the, the extension of having this movie is, yeah. what does that work look like to be able to like get it into where like what are we waiting on what are your hopes what you know with private screening film festivals like yeah. what is this looking like and how is your approach to figuring that out um i would say my approach is like slightly different from my last film um because i i am like grinding to put in like a lot of film festivals i need a little bit of extra crowdfunding to be able to like submit it into all the festivals mm -hmm. i wanted to um but i also like want it to be just like very accessible and so once I'm done with my festival run, like maybe in a few months or next year, I want to like have it posted online. And then I also want to have a lot of like community screenings, um, maybe, I don't know, just like in the park or I have a couple things in the works, you know, maybe do outside screenings, that sort of thing. But yeah, I want it to be very accessible because it is like a love letter to Milwaukee and growing up mm. here. And I just want like everybody to be able to see it. I love that you said a love letter to Milwaukee because uh, that is one of the things that we want to do like in, in the support of the alumni is to make sure that true school support is Milwaukee support mm -hmm. and, and making sure that we're really paying attention to how much creativity is in this city, yeah. uh, how much is really like the outputs are real mm -hmm. and, you know, to, to move toward a trend where we're showing up and we're supporting all the great work that's happening in the city is, you know, that's part of the goal. Mm -hmm. And so this conversation, for those of you who are listening, uh, be excited to follow Dia and to look forward to uh, seeing the film. And the name of the film is? Rearview Mirror. Rearview Mirror. And we're out. Peace. <laughs>